If you watch my channel on a regular basis then you'll know that I repair and restore a lot of vintage equipment, mostly electronic, some mechanical equipment as well. And the most recent video series I've been posting is on the repair and restoration of this PDP 1134A vintage computer. As part of that process I've carried out quite a few repairs both on this and the, um, the floppy drive system I have attached to it at the moment. And the tools I've been using are the scope, logic analyzer, that sort of thing. Uh, but you will have also seen in um, previous videos that I also repair things like the S100 uh, computer systems. And one of the tools I find quite useful um, really for doing some sort of basic diagnostics is this. It's a bus probe. I uh, sell these bare boards on my website. But what this does is it's a series of LEDs that shows the current status of all the uh, back plane and bus uh, lines, signal lines. And it's very useful for getting um, very quick uh, ideas as to how the system's behaving, what faults may be in the system. And as you become more familiar with particular pieces of equipment, things like this will give you a very immediate uh, feedback if there's a problem with the system. Now, in a recent repair, one of the repairs that I did um, post a video on in this series, we found uh, an issue with the machine locking up partway through a bus cycle when it was trying to uh, transfer data to and from the PDP memory into the RX02 floppy drive buffer memory. And what was causing that was the, um, the M-Sync line was never being asserted by the interface card. And it was staying in the wrong state, it wasn't going low when it should do, and so the entire processor was kind of locking up partway through a bus cycle. Now something like the Bus Pro would be ideal to find that very quickly. Now it wasn't difficult to find with a logic analyzer. I showed it in the video how I went about doing that. But what would have shown this up much more quickly is something like the Bus Probe that I have for the S100. So I finally bit the bullet and I purchased the equivalent for the uh, PDP. And um, this isn't quite the same, it doesn't have pulse stretchers, that sort of thing, but it does give you an um, indication as to the status of the, um, the Unibus backplane lines. It doesn't come assembled, it comes as a kit of parts, so you get a bag with all the bits in, PCB. Now I don't sell this, I'll put a link in the description of this video as to where I bought this from. So as I say, you get a bag with all the bits in it, and um, I've actually changed mine slightly. It's not um, doesn't come with this uh, top uh, cover, but there's a row of or two rows of LEDs at the top. I plug it in in a minute. You'll see it working. Uh, but I made a shroud for the LEDs. I just prefer um, having LEDs like this. It makes them easier to kind of read the uh, the status, uh, and also it enabled me to put a, a nice clear uh, sticker on here indicating what each of the LEDs uh, was indicating. So not only is this um, effectively showing the status of the unibus lines, uh, whether they're high, log, stuck or toggling, but it also replaces the bus terminator card. So the bus uh, terminator cards are there for uh, two basic purposes. They provide the bus loading and pull-up resistors required for the unibus to operate at all. Without this fitted, there will be no pull-ups on the um, Unibus backplane, and because um, all the devices talking onto it normally use open collector drivers, then uh, there would be no high-level signals on the backplane. So you need to have one of these fitted for it to work. And this also provides the SAC turnaround, um, so if none of the cards provide the uh, acknowledge signal and the acknowledge gets to the end of the backplane, then this will provide the response to the CPU, otherwise the system won't boot up. So this provides the same functionality as this, as well as giving the uh, indications for the status of the backplane lines, and it also allows connection of the logic analyzer, and you can kind of configure to a certain extent the way that the, um, this is configured. And um, that is in which particular signals you're monitoring. So it's uh, very useful, provides the termination for the bus, 
you can build this in various ways as a series of jumpers at the bottom so you can use it as a uh, you can put it into a modified um, bus slot it only goes in the a and b slots by the way if you plug it anywhere else you'll probably damage something um, but you can configure it for uh, the a and b slots in a modified uh, bus uh, slot or you can configure it for a standard bus slot so i've got it configured for standard because i want to use it as the bus terminator so it goes in the uh, back of the uh, a and b slots on the back plane and uh, it's, it, this is the sort of thing that would have very quickly shown up the issue we had with the uh, M-Sync line not going low because obviously the LED would have shown that straight away. Uh, so I'll get this plugged in, just quickly show it running and you'll get some idea as to how it looks when it's uh, lit up. Um, you can change the value of the LED uh, load resistors. So or current limiting resistors, I've got them uh, set to 1K, that's what came with my particular kit. With this shroud, it probably would have been better going for something lower, make them slightly brighter, um, but even so, it still works fine. Uh, it just might be difficult for you to see the LEDs clearly on the camera. But I'll get this plugged in and move the camera and uh, show you what this actually does. So I've removed the bus termination card I fitted the Uniprobe card, this, they call this a Uniprobe, and uh, I'll now zoom you in so you can get a closer look, and then we'll boot up the PDP and you'll see the indications on the LEDs. So closer look at the LEDs, I'll dim the uh, lab lights before I turn the PDP on just to make it clearer for you to see. They are quite clear in real life but I suspect on the camera because a lot of them will be toggling it on and off at high speed you might not be able to see them that clearly so I'll just dim the lights in here a bit. Okay I'll now power up the PDP and hopefully you can see the LEDs they all appear to be on uh, with varying degrees of brightness and that's because some are obviously on for longer than others. I'll now halt the PDP you can see that most of them go off the only ones that are still on are the uh, plus 5 volts and the uh, bbsy and sac and they should be on so that's fine so uh, what i'll do now is just try and write a value to a particular memory address so i'll just write, write a random value deposit that and you should see some flickering i'm not sure how clearly this will come out uh, on the camera as I say, there are no pulse stretches on this, so it's just very brief um, indications that the LEDs give. I'll do it a few times and hopefully it will capture at least one of them. Um, I can actually see the address incrementing as I do this. You probably can't. Um, I'll restart or reboot the PDP. And you see they all come back on. Uh, so it's very useful. Firstly, if I halt the processor and anything is still illuminated, then obviously I know something's wrong. They should all be off. Um, but the fault we had with the M-Sync uh, not doing what it should have done would be very apparent. I've had to start the fan up. The boards were getting a bit warm. But what we'll do now is try booting the PDP from floppy disk and see if uh, we get any indications on the LEDs. So I'll start up the RX02. So bit more noise okay I'll reboot the PDP and now we'll try and get it to boot from floppy drive So the PDP is now booted from floppy disk, hopefully you saw the activity on the Uniprobe, it's a very useful tool, you can't do in depth testing with it but it will give you a very immediate indication if there's something seriously wrong or if there's some contention on the Unibus or if one of the lines is just simply stuck. So um, it will save a lot of time for doing basic testing, it um, doesn't replace the logic analyzer of course. Uh, but it will make life a lot easier in the future for resolving the simple issues. So as I say, I'll put a link in the description of this video as to where I bought this. I have no affiliation whatsoever with the suppliers of this device. 
I just thought I'd mention it because it looks like it will be quite a, a useful addition to the tools I use for fault finding on these machines.